All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everyone. Russell Wright, Network Empire, ThemeZoom.com. I am so glad that you guys are on time and well caffeinated and ready to launch into web into week four. And uh, I'm really excited and proud of you for making it this far in this course. It sounds uh, like an easy thing to follow our processes and steps, but you guys are among the elite. And so I'm really glad that you are uh, sticking to your guns and uh, you have a huge number of surprises and exciting things in store for you as you ascend through the entirety of this course and, of course, as you move through our certification levels, depending upon how and where you would wish to go with your online business. I'm with Matt DeCruz, who lives in South Africa, and uh, so we have a major time difference between us. I just thought it might be interesting for you guys to know where he lives. Uh, it's a beautiful location. If you're not familiar with it, kind of look it up sometime. Um, I always like to... I'm kind of astounded sometimes by uh, how in our organization we have people all over the world working with us and as part of the whole uh, netocratic transformation of the planet. And it's just kind of cool to know that we can work with people all around the world. So uh, how is everybody this morning? Give me a one. Let's get the fingers working and the brain connecting to the brain. <laughs> Make sure that everybody's on board and that you've had your coffee. Give me a number one. If you've had whatever stimulant and or exercise and or running in place, you know, that you've make sure I have also make I'm doing a tech check make sure I can see everybody's chat system here which I cannot oh here it is okay it has been an amazingly powerful month for everybody here uh, we have so much going on in our organization and uh, well I'm not getting anybody hang on a second guys oh there you go now I can see you I'm only I'm only on my first uh, couple sips of coffee so so you and I have been up working late, and I gave a, a certification level two webinar yesterday. Uh, it took me a day to prepare for, so that was... Uh, Bill, it's good to see you. Kurt's here. Neil, you were with us yesterday. Wow, you are a badass. Go for it, man. And so is Brian. Um, Brian, uh, you're gonna, um, are you going to push me around today in this webinar, like you did yesterday, and ask awesome questions? And... <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Brian, I love it. I like the I like your activity and your uh, and your fearless question asking. And so you keep me on my toes. <laughs> Brian's like, of course, I am Sancho's. All right, Lee, it's good to see you as well, Lionel. And we have more people coming on, so I'm just stalling just a little bit. So everybody's ready for week four. How many of you? This is the first time through the certification level one. Uh, training course. Looks like we do have some perpetual old-timers, mastermind guys. Looks like I, I also have some of you taking parallel courses. Some of you I already know are coming to certification. So that's really, really good. Let me Give me a one if this is your first time through, and two if you're auditing and refreshing your memory. Yeah, that's awesome. Excellent. Bill, Lee, that's fantastic. I'm so glad that you're here again, and uh, you know, you'll be able to help others and uh, everybody in this room in the Skype group, because we do spend quite a bit of time in there uh, watching out for everybody. Um, Matt, of course, is our primary coach for this course. He's really, really good at creating silo structures and many, many other things and making sure your business uh, numbers, your business projections your, are sculpted. He's the creator of Domain Web Studio along with Sue Bell and uh, all the processes that are contained within it. So there's the advantage of being with the developer. Sue is not really with us today. She oh, she pokes in once in a while. She backs up our recordings. She's got a lot of different uh, enterprise software. We are expanding Social Explosion, which is really cool. Hi, Joshua. It's really good to see you, man. Um, I just saw you on the Skype group. Uh, Sue is working on so many cool things that it makes my head spin. Just um, <laughs> okay, can I tell him, Sue, what you're doing? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, Sue is our fearless leader uh, with everything. Software, there's so much going on that I am, you know, I constantly call her and ask her, you know, what kind of brain stimulants she's taking just so I can keep up. <clears throat> what we've just added, preparing for certification level three to crack in is the, correct me if I'm wrong, Sue, <clears throat> the number of videos around a given theme or keyword or keyword cluster will be in one of the columns. In fact, we're testing that right now with Scott, aren't we? Is that what I'm testing? It's, it's, that's what you're testing. It's the, the number of videos for each keyword in a theme. 
Now, you guys, uh, you guys know what we're doing here, right? Anybody familiar with our certification level three? What's coming? And from, if you attended our pin live vids. event, pin vids, you understand the automatic pin vid. In fact, the in fact, Neil, you were Neil and Brian were on the call yesterday. They understand the whole how to de create a designer mind virus that I taught for the first time ever. I revealed every single thing in my arsenal, almost every single thing. Um, about how we do it and how we work and why we set up the Pinvid automated sites, which is level three. Well, Kraken now has videos uh, so that when we launch the video Kraken Dominator plugin, which actually imports the automatic silo generator in it, you'll actually know which, when you're creating your themes, what has the most number of videos around it. Everybody give a round of applause. I mean, number ones for Sue Bell. <laughs> it might get her to stick around today. <laughs> Holy crap. I mean, that's all I have to say. So I, on my other window here, I have like five windows, uh, five computer screens. Uh, two of them are 72-inch monitors. Uh, on the other screen here, I've got Scott on chat simply, who is the developer, and we're testing it right now. Um, so you guys, my life is very exciting. I work with really badass people. Matt, Sue are the best business partners ever. Uh, I'm on my hands and knees with gratitude to be able to work with um, brilliant people like this, uh, the best developers in the world. Kelly Reynolds, creator of the Kraken framework with Sue, uh, coveted by Google and pursued. You know, they tried to hunt him down and shoot him. He refused. Um, you know, so we have some very powerful people in this organization, really excited about it. So anyway, moving on, I just, um, oh, Joshua asked, uh, oh, I thought video, no, Joshua, we're talking about Kraken, dude. I, Joshua, I need to sit with you and talk to you about the software. <laughs> Where the web? Oh, you do? <laughs> I don't know. You're asking me a lot of questions. I'm trying on a conversation with Joshua. Okay, good. Yeah, Sue's got it. All right. Sorry. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. I'm, you can tell what I'm excited about. Let's focus on today. we got to get you guys through the certification level one training so that we can move into uh, all of this stuff. Yeah, so Kraken, will in, Kraken data imports into the Video Kraken Dominator plugin. Okay, currently uh, the Video Kraken... Uh, plugin allows the VOMA import. The, the, the Video Kraken legacy al allows the vertical online market analysis report out of Kraken. And this upcoming one will actually allow the automatic silo blueprint. Currently, we have no plugins. Uh, the video, currently, the Video Kraken plugin does not allow the, the direct blueprint structure to be imported from um, Kraken's automatic blueprint structure. So. That'll be very powerful for you. Also, Domain Web Studio, any silo builder will import as usual. And the cool thing is you can still import Kraken, uh, Kraken data into Domain Web Studio, any silo builder, and do all the things that you need to do for WR1, knowing that there's videos in mind as well if you want to. So that's very, very cool. That's sweet. All right, so today, today Matt's going to get really into everything. I'm going to get out of the way. I'm going to be answering your questions that come up to the best of my ability. Uh, otherwise, I'll pass them to Matt. Uh, he, we do have webinar archives of this course. Uh, this is specific to you guys. And uh, I'm just going to step out of the way and let jump right into website silo architecture. Before we begin, just one last thing. I'd like to know, did everybody complete their previous homework assignments for week two and three? Let me, uh, give me a one if you have done a FAQ, SAQ process. This is really important uh, to make the optimal use of what Matt's going to teach you today. Okay, it looks like most of you have it and some of you might be on the line with it. I would urge you uh, to go ahead and finish that process. Those of you who are on the second round for our process. Oh, great. I'm glad to, uh, thanks for your honesty. I'm glad some of you have about half done. Good job, Lee. Keep going. Like, you can ask Sue Bell uh, how often we use our FAQ, SAQs that were created five years ago. I mean, they're always growing, but the foundation building blocks of the frequently asked questions, and those of you who watched my uh, training on how to build a designer mind virus, hopefully, Brian, Neil, you were there. Hopefully, you're starting to get some of the connections between how building an industry demolishing or meme <laughs> is related to your FAQ, SAQ. There's a relationship between understanding the pains in the market, understanding what people really care about, and coming up with concepts that stack. We call this meme stacking and story stacking. Uh, the FAQ, SAQ process kind of helps you shape that almost automatically. Okay, that's really what that's about. So what, that when Matt shows you the proper silo structures and how to sculpt the keywords and all the technical stuff, that it's really going to make a lot of sense to your users, and your users will be kind of sucked into the vortex of your better ideas and your better inventions. That's really what we're going to show you today. All right, you guys, 
Matt, thank you so much for being here. I know it's late in South Africa. Let's just jump right into this. No worries. Great. Just want to do a quick sound check. Um, guys, can you give me a one if you can hear me clearly? A two if you can't. Just make sure everyone can hear me today. Okay, awesome. Great. Okay, guys, so um, weeks one, two, and three, we had quite intense sessions with Russ where he, he showed us different ways to actually think about what we're doing before we start looking at keyword lists and keyword data groups. And um, the reason for us doing that stack first is because we need to get into the mindset, of, okay, what are we selling, who are we selling it to, and what are the pains that these people have. When we understand the people, what we did in week three is we got exposed to Kraken. And this is we started looking at the market and how the language these people use to find the solutions to their pains that they have. Okay, so with this idea of language, I'd like to start crossing the idea and making it a bit more granular where we're jumping from understanding the language to actually looking at what does that language mean when we look at the keywords and then what does those keywords actually mean to our business. How does this, these words tie into our business and how we're going to actually start setting up our site structure. Okay, so um, as you can see over here, we've got the forward our zero tolerance policy for digital theft. Um, Kevin wants us to basically just read this out before every single call. Um, so. Guys, I'm not going to go through the whole speech now, but basically, you know the policy, and for the guys in New York who haven't heard it, we, we take proactive action against those who steal our stuff and put it online, and the, the results are often not fun for the guys that are being thieves. Okay, so and, with that uh, said, Alpha, Matt, I've got to say, we do that for your benefit. Um, we want every one of you to, and the value that you're providing for your clients uh, to be extreme, so this is for you. That is not a threat. That is a legal requirement for us to say that. We want you to be very much aware that we are doing that for you. Okay. Thanks, Matt. I really appreciate yes. it. Remember that. I forgot. <laughs> yeah, no, no. It's fine. Uh, I'm just trying to stick to you. the rules Kevin's laid down for us. <laughs> okay. So, start framework. Okay. So, before I start speaking about silo architecture, um, before we can start building our site, we need to get our site online. And uh, can you guys give me a one if you've set up WordPress websites and you're familiar with it, or two if you've never actually built a website before, just so I can get a feeling. Um, from the conversations we've had, I know most of you guys are pretty good veterans and you, you know what you're doing. Okay, so I'm not going to get stuck into too much of the setting up of the website, but what we do in in the Tech Foundation is we start introducing, introducing to the idea of a site framework where um, Essentially, what we're doing is we're using WordPress as one of the frameworks, and within this framework, we have multiple components that we can use, which are plugins. Okay, so what we're doing is as we build our WR framework, there's specific things that we want to use, and what I've drawn out for you guys in the course is essentially um, just some connection maps that we can actually look at how things are pulled together. So we've got the server, we've got our primary domain, our subdomain. On the subdomain, we're going to build our blog. On our primary domain, we're going to build our money site. And in the rest of the course, I'm going to speak about the primary money site as your transaction engine, and I'm going to speak about the blog as your broadcasting engine. Okay. Now, each of these frameworks that are on WordPress have required components, which are your payment gateways, your autoresponders, your analytics, you've got default plugins that you use, these backups. You've got the content distribution networks, there's one feed, and then there's semantic tagging. Okay, the semantic stuff that we do. These are all the components that come together to create your website. Can you guys give me a one if you understand that, and you understand the concept of the framework with the components that are within it? So essentially, the frameworks are plug and play. We plug things in to get specific results. Okay, cool. So what we're going to speak about first is the primary money website. Okay. And what we've done here, guys, is we've mapped out a basic structure for you, but this is not the only way to set up WordPress and set up your framework. You set it up according to what you need, but these are the basic core components that one would use. So from the server, on our primary domain, we'll create a money website, and if you're using cPanel, you can go to Soft Delicious. You can use the app installer to quickly install it, so it's app installer, scripts, WordPress. You install WordPress. It gets set up, you set up your database, you configure your site settings, you sort out the admin accounts, you choose the language for the thing, and then you start selecting your plugins. Okay. Once we've got our plugins installed, typically we'll install the DDoS Silo plugin, Google XML, the Yoast Analytics, Yoast SEO, 
And over here I've got Yoast Local, but I've actually, I'm going to start pulling that one out. I've noticed that there's issues with that, so that's going to get pulled out. And then we've got the video sitemap for XML. Those are the, the basic components we use at a minimum when we set up our site. Okay, because we're working with video, we're working with content, we're working with SEO optimization. So these are the core things that we need to make the WordPress framework deliver the content in a specific way that we want it delivered. Okay, um, can you guys give me a one if you're clear on what happens on the WR1 money framework? You can see from this picture that there's not a lot of stuff going on. We're keeping the plugins to a uh, minimal. Um, the reason why we don't use hundreds of plugins on our WordPress sites is because we want to keep the databases as tight and clean as possible. We don't have hundreds of plugins injecting their tables and their content and the metadata into the tables to actually bloat your website. The more plugins you use, the price you pay is your WordPress framework response slower to requests that are made on it. Okay. Um, yes, I'm going to talk about Bluetooth today, uh, uh, Bill. Um, I've been actually, I was actually looking at the security side of things again today, and there's actually a few nice ones that have come out which I want to test. And today I'm going to introduce you guys into the concept of having a sandbox. Okay. Um, when you go through this course, you want to set up your sandbox first. This is really, really important. And essentially, your sandbox is a WordPress uh, setup where you go and test your plugins. You test new things and you make sure that it works there first before you roll it out to your live sites. Okay, so you go from development and testing to production. Okay, once your website's live, it's in production. It's actually delivering what you want to the public. You're going to always come back in a repetitive motion and update that production uh, version of your site, but before you install any components, test them in your sandbox first. So if the sandbox crashes and plugin breaks everything, your site does not go down. Okay, next thing we have is our primary blog, and it's the same set of process, same types of plugins, but we'll have additional plugins like Social Explosion, which will basically be on our W1 framework, okay. And then from our blog, we'll have one feed coming out of our blog and doing the stuff that it does on our, social, our primary social accounts. Okay, so what we're going to do is, sorry, in week three, you want to basically go set up your website, okay, well sorry, week three, we, we did our market analysis, we drilled into all our keywords, we got an idea of the keywords that we wanted to use, week four, we're going to set up our blog, set up a money site, and then we're going to hop across to DWS and map out our ideas and start creating the framework for the site, okay. So, on the site framework set up three, week three to five, I've got the whole process mapped out for you guys over here, so I'm not going to go into too much detail, but I'll show you step by step how to install WordPress, how to activate your themes, there's the configurations for Yoast and WordPress local, the analytics, Bluepit set, all those things are there, cloning your website, how to do it with uh, Fantastico, and then creating a subdomain and then cloning your W1 primary site to your blog, okay. Now, the reason why I set up the framework first before I go and build my silo structures is I want to do all the cloning up front before I've injected the site framework into my, my actual master copy, okay. Now, when you guys, just, for, uh, just to save time, what you guys want to do is when you find a really nice theme and you get it configured and you get all your plugins configured for that theme, always make a complete backup of that actual theme in its raw form where there's no content and it's not been optimized for a specific site. When you back those sites up, you can actually redeploy them, okay? And that saves you a lot of time for specific configurations. So let's just say you're doing an um, a, a e-commerce type of shop with WooCommerce as an example. You're going to configure, set up all the plugins, get everything fine-tuned and tweaked. That'll take you a few hours or a day to get that all done right. Once that's all done, back up everything and then you can redeploy it in a few seconds when you come to use that type of copied template again in the future. Can you guys give me a one if you understand that? I typically drop my templates into Dropbox and then I just redeploy them when I need them, when they're in that virgin state. Um, are you guys all clear with that process? It will save you a lot of time in the future where you actually start building up a library of specific themes and configurations, okay? The, when the cloning process takes place, you take your master, you duplicate that onto your blog, and then all you have to do is change your analytics code and a few little tweaks here and there, and then that site's set up very quickly. 
Okay, so going to back to week three, um, I'm just going to use the SASE concept here. Um, this is the SASE market analysis, and we looked at their business. And <clears throat> Sue gave us a great discussion last week where she took us through how to look at the keywords, how to find how the money flows to the market, what keywords are important, what keywords are having a lot of money spent on them within the market. And we have got to see how the market was laid out, broken out, and through the white papers, we have got to see how competitive that actual market was. So last week, I went and drilled into all your accounts, all the guys that gave the keywords. When you log into Kraken now, you'll see all your keyword themes drilled out for you in preparation for uh, pulling all the information and content into DWS. Okay. So when we want to import keywords into DWS, all we have to do is simply go to the theme we're interested in that we want to map out. And we can say show all keywords, we we'll click on this link here. What that does is it exposes not just the top 20 keywords, but it actually goes and brings back sometimes between 100 and 300 keywords in a big keyword list for us. So you can see I've said keywords and Kraken has brought us back a big list of important themes and keywords that are relevant to that idea we want to speak about. You just right click, save link as, to wherever you want to save your content, and that, that CSV file that you download, we're going to import that into DWS. Okay, now before I do that, I want to just talk a bit more about um, thinking about your business when you come to actually map out your site. Um, one of the common problems many folks have is when they come to look at keywords, the columns that seem to suck their brains and, and cause their brains to, to crash is the search column, the competing pages column and the cost per click. What happens is people forget to look at the actual words and the meaning that the word has to the market personality that we're trying to sell to and they're getting caught up in the technical, they're looking at the numbers. Okay. What we want to understand when we're looking at these words is how do these words translate to creating traffic for our site which then leads the people into our products and our services. Okay. So, when we look at this map here, wedding dresses. Now for Sassy, this is one of the important keywords that came back from the automated draw that we've done. Um, wedding dresses is very closely related to what the girls at Sassy do. They do wedding hair and makeup, but wedding dresses has popped in. Okay. Is this a keyword I would add into my actual site if it's a hair salon, or is this something that I would build out as a WR2 to drive traffic? Uh, on a different place. Um, give me a one if I'd add the wedding dresses to my site for the, the sassy hair salon. Now remember this is a hair salon and what they do is makeup, wedding hair and makeup, it's, uh, the hair, basic hair salon services and then they do fashion and photography for advertising companies. Um, would I add wedding dresses to my WR1 website or would I actually leave that out even though it has a ton of searches every single day for the country we're looking at. Can you guys give me a one if to add it or two or not? I think they've all, uh, you answered already. Two, two, two. Two, yeah. Okay. Typically, I wouldn't add wedding dresses to our site. The only instance I would add a wedding dress is if there's a reciprocal relationship with people who actually make dresses, like companies that make dresses, where they're sending business our way and then we're sending business back to them and getting affiliate commissions on any sales that are made. And, uh, that would be something I would add into the blog. I absolutely. I would really add it onto my W1 primary money site. Yeah, also I want to add to what Matt's saying is just keep okay. in mind, Matt, can you hear me? Sure. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, perfect. All right, just a little thing to add to what Matt's saying. You always keep your keywords and you keep topics like that for your WR2 automation network because those are related to tangent themes. So Sue calls these empire keywords. So just keeping in mind that you don't throw things away. Does everybody know that? Because everything gets swallowed into the market. We don't call it swallow your market whole for no reason. Okay, so you keep all those okay. keywords for later use. <laughs> One of the secrets of Kraken, which um, I've only been exposing to you guys in this tech course, is that everything is connected. And when we understand that everything is connected, what we have to understand next is where is it connected within the web ring. And like Russell has told us now, the wedding dresses can be a whole site dedicated, which can be a pinvid even, showing us all the wedding dresses where we control the golden frame and our banners and our advertising and our call to actions and our lead opt-in forms are there on the WR2, which then drives traffic back to our WR1. Okay. 
Um, so I'm going to go back to view the themes and looking at the SASE business, this, this client essentially has got three core services. It's hair, makeup, and anything to do with hair and makeup in the wedding industry. Okay. Those are the three core things. So when we drilled into Kraken, Kraken brought us back lots of things like wedding, wedding venues, MAC makeup, this is a brand, this is an actual product that they use. We've got hair color, short hair, hairstyles, hair stylists, hair salon, hair products. All these keywords are all connected to what the ladies do. So how do we take this keyword data and turn it into a business proposition which speaks directly to our market personalities and answers and deals with what they're dealing with and what they want. Okay, so this is your typical brick and mortar type of business. So what we do is um, once we've analyzed the market and we found the important themes within Kraken and we understand where the money flows. So we can see here, uh, wedding dresses and weddings are huge. They've got the most money here in this country. Okay, then wedding venues is next and Mac makeup and hair color. So from venues, from the dresses and the weddings to actual products, okay, to the hairstyling. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm looking at the TSMV, but I'm grouping the ideas by how the money is spent. So all, all this stuff over here in this band of over like uh, $1,000 per month, uh, per year, sorry, here's where we start finding all the things that are relevant to the SASE business, okay. So by grouping like keywords and seeing how the money flows through those markets, we can actually see what words people are using to find the product or the service that they want. Can you guys give me a one if you're clear of what I've said there? Because this is pretty important. Okay, cool. Once more. Okay, I'll say it for you, but I'll explain again. What I'm trying to establish here, guys, is you probably noticed I've only looked at the TSMV column here. I'm trying to establish where the money flows through the market and what band of group of themes is relevant to the actual business. So I look at how the money flows and yeah, under six million, we've got wedding dresses and weddings. That's where most of the money flows in this market. Then we've got wedding venues and Mac makeup, which is quite interesting. Okay, that's the next band that's got the most money flowing through it. Then from hair color down, Okay, so take up to your hairstyles. These are all the keywords, hair and beauty, makeup artist, hair products, hair, hair salon, hairstylist, hairstyles, short hair, bridal, hairstyles. These are the keywords that are the next batch of keywords that are important. Okay, now it's funny what I find here is when they speak about wedding dresses, they use the words wedding, but when they're talking about bridal hair and all that kind of stuff, the words bridal comes into play. Okay, so there's a, a big switch between the two. Then lower down, we find some more stuff dealing with beauty and beauty therapy. Okay, so we're not really dealing, okay, we're starting to deal with beauty now in, in the SASE business, but this batch of keywords is the one that is relevant to my business. So those are the themes I'm going to actually start with first. Okay, so what I've done there is I've taken the core definitions of keyword themes that are specifically relevant to the products and the services that we can sell at this very specific moment in time. And that's when I start building my WR1 site. I, I'm not worried about wedding dresses because that is essentially a WR2. I'm not worried about weddings, that's essentially a WR2. I'm not worried about wedding venues, that's a WR2. We don't directly deal with those keywords, so we're not going to add them into our WR1 money website. Your ultimate goal is to map out the keywords that drive the most traffic to your products and services with the way people use the language when they're looking for things online. Okay, guys, can you give me one if you understand what I'm saying there, if that's clear to you now? Because that's really important. If you get that concept, when you come to map out your silo structure, then all of a sudden creating the storyline and the story, the story structure, the silo structure, it becomes much, much easier because you know exactly what you want to say. Okay, so what we do next is uh, we typically open up DWS and the way DWS works is we've got empires, which is at the top level, and then with each empire, we can have multiple projects. Okay, so you can have all your projects underneath it. I'm going to open up Minimi quickly as well for the guys who are using that, just so we can get the same crossover. 
So we'll log into this quickly. <coughs> so when you log into your project, what you come up with is your keyword decision screen, which is the screen here with all your keywords and your silo framework over here. Okay, that's a camping one. I just want to show you two different types of themes. Um, this is the sassy one. Let's move this here. Okay. So yeah, you can see I've got hair and I've got wedding, hair and makeup. Now, the reason why I've gone to the top of the vertical in South Africa for these specific keywords is because the internet market, the actual size of the market is pretty small. We're talking like maybe one or two or three million pages. That's not huge like the US, okay? That's not as competitive as the US or the UK. Whereas in South Africa, it seems the internet's a lot, lot smaller, which makes life much easier for getting things ranked on the side. Okay, so what I've done first is, the first question I ask myself is, what are my business rules, okay? And on this tab here, business rules and filters, this is where we define our KPIs. These are key performance indicators that we want to try and achieve when taking the keyword data we find in Kraken and actually analyzing it against what the business requirements are. Okay, so the first, the first part here is where we say how many rows we want to see. Then we can say what our average page rank is or the domain authority. So when you look at your, your white papers in your Kraken blueprints, you can start seeing for the keywords and themes that you're actually looking at. So if we just hop across to, let's just go to hair. It's going to hop into hair quickly. Actually, let's just go straight to what we're dealing with, hair salon, hair style, that's hair salon, that one. I'll start with the business type, hair salon. And jump onto the white papers. And the, the, the website is ranked number one. It's got 15 pages indexed. It's got a page rank of three, a, a page authority of three, domain authority of 24. So this is not hard to, to, to beat these guys. The next one is DA of eight. So looking at the South African search engines, it's taking us back to like 2002. Just we've got a bit more complex filters with Panda and pa uh, the Penguin stuff there. But typically the websites are not optimized in comparison to the more competitive markets you guys are working in, okay? So what I do over here is I look at the domain authorities and I basically come back to the EWS and I'll just take this down to three because on average it's about three, okay? When I change this filter over here, what it's going to actually do is run through an algorithm that assesses all the keywords and it actually applies a competitive analysis against it, okay? Oh, Brian, yeah, we, we're busy rebuilding, uh, in the process of rebuilding DWS to become Network Empire Builder. There's a whole brand new version, it's a complete new rewrite, and we're applying all the new things that we are actually doing now to that. So this version of DWS will soon become obsolete. You'll be able to still access it and use it if you want to, but it won't be in the forefront anymore. Network Empire Builder will actually come up, and that's going to be integrated with TLKT as well. So you can actually put your keywords directly from TLKT into the tool without having to import things anymore. So we're actually optimizing and automating things even more to help you build your sites faster. Okay, but for now, just while we're still here in this world, I've just changed it down to three. So what I did was I went to Kraken, I looked at the white paper for the theme I'm interested in, I saw how competitive it was, I then came back and I just lowered the grid. So you can turn it up or down. If you develop the products, if you turn it down, the price decreases. Okay, we've got a currency exchange. If you're not US, if you're US, you can just leave it to basically one. Uh, if you're outside of the US, you can just click on this little link here. That'll give you a currency conversion. You stick the conversion in, and it translates the data for you. Okay, because primar primarily DWS is built for the US market, but we've internationalized it by using the currencies so that we can get a better estimate of what it's going to cost us. Okay, so. <clears throat> The golden niche filter is quite a cool little function we have here, and what it allows us to do is identify little niches. So we can say, show us any pages that have less than 100,000 phrase match and earn more than $1,000 rands, euros, pounds per month. Okay, so what that will do is on our keyword grid, it's going to put a gold star next to these keywords that are actually worth quite a bit of money and we can find them.
The silo market size, you can typically just leave this as default, but the way this works is when we're looking for silos, we typically want to look for keywords in the US greater than 6 or 7 million, okay? The categories are lower than 6 or 7 million, so you can see we keep them the same, and then the supporting articles, we set them to basically 10,000 or 100,000. It's up to you. What we're doing there is we're just chopping the market up into three sections, and that helps us sort and organize the keywords into little subsets where we can see where they belong into this type blueprint. Can you guys give me a one if you actually understand that, what I've just said there? Because this is customizable, guys. Um, if you're finding that your silos aren't popping up and the, the keywords are low, you can drop this down, you can adjust this, you can move the bar up or down, and that helps you segment your keywords into the groups for silos, categories, and supporting articles. Typically, your silo is the top of the theme. Within your silo, you need a minimum of three categories. And then if you're going to use supporting articles, which is not a prerequisite, um, typically when I build my sites, I do a silo and a category. When you use Kraken Blueprints, it's a silo and a category. And in Kraken, they call it articles. Okay, So it's only two layers down. It's not going down three layers. Um, the supporting articles is typically where you can use it for locales or you can use them for products or services or brands, products and services. You can create all the long tails and stick them at the supporting article level. And you can make your site nice and wide, but you can also make it very deep if you want to. And it's all controlled through that structure there. Um, what we do here for our project development cost is we essentially looking at what does it cost us to create one unit of content and what is the price. Okay. Now, to create a backlink, you need to create an article, typically. So we put a price in for promotion, and then for content, which is our primary content, we've got a fixed price as well for that premium content we're creating on our WRON site. So the backlink unit cost is typically your promotion cost. Now, Social Explosion has radically reduced this type of effect by what it does. So every time you write your article on your blog and you post it, Social Explosion then goes out and it syndicates that content all around the web and gives you all the social signals back. Okay, so that whole process has been actually automated and is extremely powerful. Okay, uh, with a content development cost, this is what goes onto your WR1 site into the framework. Okay, this is your content. This is your sales copy. Can you guys give me one if you're clear on the project development cost settings? I just want to move through these pretty quickly. Cool. Okay, so just to recap, we set our competitiveness. We've identified goals and niches. We segmented our data into groups so we can easily see how to shift them around and where they should go. Uh, we set our content development cost. And now we're working on our project sales funnel. Okay. So the pro project conversion rules. Typically what we're doing here is we are we're looking at our, our, our traffic to profit funnel is essentially what we call this. And we're looking at okay, what happens when the guy sees our listing in Google? How many people are going to click on that and come through our site? When they land on our site, how many people are going to actually convert? And if we're doing lead generation, where we generate leads and it goes to an actual company, who then phones that lead back and proceeds to uh, upsell their service or their product to that person, there's also a conversion factor there. We fill that amount in. Okay. Then what we have is our list management conversion factors which I'll come to shortly. Now, if you're not doing lead generation for a company, okay, just set this to 100. It nulls it out. It just doesn't even pay attention to it. Now, typically when I start my projects, I make my Google traffic conversion rate 25%. Okay? This is quite a debated topic, but the mindset that I go into when I'm looking at my KPIs and setting up my business rules is I'm coming from a conservative point of view. Some guys like to put up to 40% and say, yeah, we'll get 40% of the traffic. I strongly disagree with that. Rather be conservative and pleasantly surprised than being generous and being uh, dramatically disappointed. Okay? If the, the, the typical conversion rate for this industry when they're doing offline marketing, like newspapers, they tell you your average conversion rate is 1%. Okay? Some markets, it's even down to 0.25%. It's like a quarter of a percent. Okay, that's through offline media, if you're doing flyer drops and that kind of stuff. 
Now on the web, obviously, we get different variables, but we want to start conservative, and then as the project's live and we start getting the feedback loops, we can start tweaking things and changing things and getting the dynamic feedback from our data that we've actually gone and drilled into and analyzed. Okay, so can you guys give me one if you understand the project conversion rules and how it works and the reasons why we use stuff? Um, for lead generation, this works for affiliate. I just want to put this in as well. If you're doing affiliate sales, you can put your vendor site that you're sending traffic to. You can put their conversion rate in there, and that adds in that extra hop. And then you can actually see, does this keyword actually make money? How much traffic do I need? What do I need to actually make money work? Okay, cool. Now for list management, um, this is a new feature we've been playing with in DWS, and what it does is it gives us um, a process of actually looking at our opt-in list, and we're looking at the conversion rate of the opt-in list. So what this does is when you build a list, you start writing letters and you start promoting to that actual list. And in DWS, we give you two different figures with these conversions. So you can actually fill these in, and I'll come back to them shortly when we look at the keyword grid. But sometimes it paints a really interesting story that shows you if you actually are focusing on building a list, what potentially you can generate from income. Okay, now this is the important column here. What is the average profit? Okay, so for this website, because we're dealing with multiple themes and multiple products and not specifics, okay, what we do is we take an average. What is the average profit we'll make if we create a conversion? Okay, so if someone comes into the business, like for Sassy, when we started Sassy off, we focused on wedding hair and makeup. That was the, the focus of the whole website. That was the first theme we actually worked on and it worked to get it ranked, okay? The reason why we did that was for every one lead that we get in, we have the potential of getting maybe anywhere between three and seven people, okay? Because you've got the bride, you've got all the bridesmaids that come in, and you're typically the mother of the bride. And they come as a big group, and it's a whole day event. They sit there, they have their snacks, their champagne, the bride gets made beautiful, all the hair gets done, and they go through a trial process. Then it's the big day, it's the wedding, and the girls at Sassy actually go to the wedding venue, and they take their gear with them and actually do the ladies right there at the event and make sure that they're perfect for the day. So what we've done here is I've just put in the average price of what they would earn. Okay, now typically for their business, I'm just going to take it up to like a thousand. Okay, that's roughly what they'll take off the what what we're focusing on. So let's just say our financial target goal monthly. How much money do we want to generate, or how much business do we want to generate on a monthly basis from this website? Now, this is where we start sticking flags in the ground. These are goals. These are objectives. So I've just written over here for the business we want to turn over one hundred thousand rand. Okay. Then what we're doing there is what our budget for the year. So I've just put in fifty thousand. And what this does, it actually calculates how many sales we need to meet our financial goal and how many visitors we need. So you can see we need 100 visitors to create a conversion because you've got a 1% conversion rate. Okay. Now, for direct sales to achieve our goals, we're going to have to have at least 10,000 people coming through our site in a month. Okay. If we're doing another hop and I put this into 50, Look what it does. Let's just say the, the, the other website that we're sending stuff to is take it down to 30%. By adding that extra filter, it's shown us that we need to find 33,000 hits to our website a month. Okay. So do you guys get how the traffic and conversion calculator helps us establish how much traffic we need to find to meet our business rules and goals? Hey, Matt. Uh, someone asked a question. I just okay. want to... Matt. Um, someone asked a question. Yeah. Someone asked a question that I wanted to confirm. I got the right answer for. Uh, looks like I have a little bit of a delay with you. But um, he was asking about the unit for a backlink. That was the unit estimated cost that you put in across your general backlink costs, right? It's like it's a medium baseline. Yeah, it's just what's the average cost to to write a blog post? Yeah, um, I want to let you guys know that. Wait, to write a blog post. Yeah, because you, you need to deliver, develop the content to, to create the backlink. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, all right. So, yes, and what I am expressing here is that, guys, this helps you sculpt the data. 
it's not an exact science. For instance, you can't put, I've had this question before, you can't put in, obviously with one kind of backlink you might be playing this, another one you might be paying that. So this is the cost, your cost of the development of the content is what you're saying, right Matt? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right, cool. That's, that's where you're going to spend most of your money is actually on the development of the content. Um, some content you'll repurpose and you'll, you'll place it in multiple places, but to create that specific unit, what we're trying to do now is create a baseline as we're sculpting the data, as we're taking the data from Kraken, we, we're merging it with our business rules and the financial goals and, and parameters we have. And this is why we're using baselines because we want to actually normalize the data so it makes business sense to us when we actually look at the data and look at the grid. Okay. So does that answer your question or was that, was that Bill or Brian? Does that answer your question with the unit cost? You can just give me one if it does. Cool. Because guys, what we want to do is we want to normalize things. We want to sort of take the spikes and the troughs and we actually want to pull them a bit wider so it actually creates a wave. So we can actually see like a, a, a nice flow. And once we've got that flow, we can actually see, okay, this is the band that's going to help us make money in a site. Okay, so I'm going to update the filters that we got here, and we can actually look at the keyword grid, and I'll explain to you what goes on here. Now, Sue, Russ, and I spent a lot of time working on the keyword grid as, as it's, this whole project's evolved, and um, this is the data that we got from Kraken, and we can use data from TLKT, and the way we do that is we simply just import the data using the import keyword. That, so if it's from Kraken, you can pull in Kraken Voma, you can pull in the Kraken import list, or you can actually do the Kraken Blueprint import list. You can actually select where the data source comes from. Then, last keyword tool, we can use that. So, essentially, you'll do that, you'll click Browse, you'll point to your CSV file, you'll click Import. Once you click Import, this will bring you back to the Keyword Decision screen. Now, when you're new to this process, what we recommend is work on one silo at a time, okay, you're going to do like a repetitive process, you're going to create a silo, you're going to map it out, you're going to drop your content into it, you're going to push it live to your site. Once the site's live, that silo's live, you're going to optimize it on the site and then you'll come back and you carry on and you'll create another silo if your market allows you to do it. Some markets you're going to enter, you might only be able to create one or two silos. This might just be a super niche, it's small. So don't get stressed and tied around the bottle thinking you have to find five silos. Some, 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 some markets that you target or some products you target just don't allow that much. Um, I had a good chat with Tim, for example, um, with his project and he's dealing with a very specific uh, niche type of thing and there's only certain type of words that humanity uses to describe what they're feeling and there's certain results which are the products that they can use to fix that solution. But the, when we put it all together, there's maybe one or two silos that we can create. Okay. So once we've imported our keywords, guys, what DWS does is it ranks, filters and sorts all the keywords. It goes through 17 checks. Each keyword goes through 17 checks and the grid brings back the most profitable keywords based on your business rules. Now remember, when we go back to what Kraken's done, Kraken's analyzed close to, just correct me if I'm wrong, yes, between 80,000 and 100,000 keywords, um, Russ and Sue. This is what it does when it does the draw. And then it ranks and filters and gives us back the top 20 important words within that theme we've drawn. If we say show more, it gives us up to 200. So out of 80,000 to 120,000 keywords, Kraken's gone and chunked through all that data, thrown out all the trash and all the chaff, and it's given us the, the core nuggets that are important to that conversation. We're now taking that important data, we're pushing it to DWS, and we're merging it with our business rules and applying financial outcomes to it. Yeah, yeah, Russ, uh, Brian's saying sometimes it's just a big silo, that's right. Sometimes you just have one silo, that's huge. Um, so what we've got here is the, the keyword grid. And these little icons give us specific little functions. Okay, this first icon here with the charts is our traffic to keyword funnel. So if we look at the keyword makeup and you click on that link, what this does is it gives us the behind the scenes analysis of what's actually gone on and it's quite interesting to look at the value of the keyword and all the things that it qualifies for. So based on our business, makeup gets a 100% score because it's very relevant to what we're doing, plus it meets all these rules. 
So what it does is it goes through traffic conversion funnel, it then goes through on-page conversions, it looks at our development cost of our content, our income potential based on the conversions, and then does the income and expenses analysis and then it tells us whether that keyword is going to be profitable or not. Okay. So this happens across every single keyword that comes into your keyword grid. It analyzes every single one and then gives us a quality score. If some of the rules fail, we can actually check the little red X and it'll tell us why. Okay, so it's quite a detailed report and it's pretty cool. Okay, so what you're going to find there is if you want to understand what's going on with that keyword, you can click into that. It gives you more detail. The next little icon basically gives us the place to update our competitor data, search volume, and omitted results. So let's just say we find a keyword and we believe the data is a bit off, and we verify the data and it's, we need to correct it. We can click on that we can update those numbers. As soon as we click save, that keyword gets reevaluated and put back into the, the, the list of keywords. Okay. Then we've got competing pages, search volume. The search volume is monthly, so we take the daily search volume from DWS, we convert it to a monthly number, we multiply it by 29.5, so that factors in leap years and it gives us an average. Okay. And then we get our conversions column. So based on the amount of search and our business rules, Makeup can potentially create 332 conversions for the business on a monthly basis. Okay. Now, when we look at that, we have to look at the actual keyword in context to what it means to the business. Does Makeup actually speak directly to our products and our services? And where will Makeup fit in the whole story? Okay. So you can see over here I chose Makeup without the space. It's all one word versus that one there. And the reason why I've done that is if I hover over makeup here, I'm dealing with a million pages, whereas makeup of the space has got 2.8 million pages. So it's got more competing pages. But the traffic is actually 136. Yeah. With with makeup here, it's quicker to get ranked and it also it's got more money flowing through it. Okay. So when you hover over the keywords in DWS, it actually gives you a breakdown of what you're looking at. Okay. So let's look at what I've done here. Here is what the business is about. This is my index page and here's essentially the top of my market. I've then gone and looked at the industries and the sectors we're going to work in. We're working in weddings, we're working hair, we're working in makeup. Okay. Now because the market's small, I've gone to the top of the vertical. If these keywords are huge, like 40 millions, 50 millions, 200 millions, a trillion, it's like don't use those keywords. They're too broad, they're too huge. You've got to go down the vertical to exactly where you need to be. Okay. In this instance, this works for this model. Um, this is what I wanted to show to you guys. So we've got the conversions. We then get TTR, and this is an algorithm that looks at the estimated time to rank. Okay. And what that does is it takes the, the page rank and the domain authority into account and it takes the competitiveness of the actual keyword and it calculates roughly on a conservative basis this could take up to 15 months to get ranked for this keyword, a year and a half. Okay. Now if you're good, like Jimmy Kelly, it could take you six days. If you're intermediate, it could take you three months. If you're a basic or beginner and you're busy with other things, it can take longer. So this is what this column actually indicates to us, is the conservative amount of time it's going to take you to get ranked for the keyword. It then tells us we need about 125 backlinks coming into our site. So plugins like Social Explosion sort that out. Doing domain authority stacking with Jimmy Kelly sorts that out. Doing the one feed sorts out the backlinks. So guys, don't, when you build your WR1 sites and your WR2 sites, don't make the focus on the backlink, okay? Make the focus on the promotion. The backlink is the byproduct of your promotion. And when you apply what Russell teaches us, and you're setting out that copy, okay, and you, you're setting out the videos that are designed to create those mind viruses and to suck that traffic in, these backlinks just automatically start appearing through our promotional activities that we do. Okay. The biggest mistake a lot of guys make is they try and just pump hundreds of backlinks to their pages and that's their focus. It's not actually driving traffic and it's traffic that creates conversions, not backlinks. Okay. The SSA, okay, this is the suggested supporting articles. 
if we're going to speak about the makeup theme, okay, now remember these are theme keywords that have come back from Kraken. Each one has a subset that sits underneath it, okay. We need a roughly a silo structure or 24 pages on the site that actually have the term makeup on it, okay. So we look at these articles. That can be silo, categories, supporting articles across the entire site. We need roughly a site of about 24 pages at the minimum. Okay, that's roughly what this, is, this SSA column does. Um, can you guys give me a one if you're actually clear on what those columns mean when you actually look at them, or two if you're not sure? Okay, seems like Bill's the only guy. Kurt's not sure. Lionel's got it. Um, okay, what? Although they're obviously mostly helpful. It's just in relative sense. Guys, these are just um, indicators. These data that we get, they're just giving us guidelines and they're giving us references of how much content we actually need to actually build something up. Okay? Like for example, if you look at this makeup keyword, this could be an anomaly. It says it's got 407 million pages with make dash up on it. Okay? That means we're going to need like a thousand pieces of a thousand backlinks and nearly a hundred pieces of articles to go for that make up type of keyword. Okay, that keyword doesn't make us profit. Okay, you can see it's going to cost us money. Um, golden star, golden niche, wedding ideas, and a hundred thousand. It's got twenty six thousand searches a month. That's a keyword you want to start considering for your WR twos. Okay, now coming back to this, the cost. Basically, what the cost does is it takes your landing page into account that the keyword is going to be on, so for example, wedding, and then it takes in the supporting articles, and it actually applies the content development cost to that, which gives us this value over here. Yeah, Brian is laughing. He's, he's saying uh, time to rank is zero for uh, wedding ideas. This is purely because it's like 21,000 pages phrase match. It's going to be really easy to get ranked. If you went for that keyword in South Africa, that keyword would be pretty easy to get ranked for, just purely because there's not a lot of content online about it. And if we apply what Jimmy and, and uh, Russell teach us, and Sue teach us, this becomes really, really easy to get ranked for. So that's why we got a zero for the time to rank. It's pretty easy to get ranked for the keyword. Okay. The direct sales revenue per month takes, direct, takes into account our conversions, times our profit, okay, and it gives us a number of what we can potentially make. Our indirect sales, this relates directly to the opt-in list conversion factors that we have, okay. So it's essentially anything that's indirect. So it could be your wiki that you're putting on there. It could be um, the list building. It's anything that's indirect. It's not coming, the traffic's not coming directly from your WR1. It's through other activities that you make. That, this is what this column indicates to us. Yeah, uh, Brian was saying could factor word of mouth, offline stuff too. Yeah, like um, when, when I was working in the property industry and uh, we were doing a lot of the repossession type of things, we worked in foreclosures, as you call it in America. Um, what we did was we drove online campaigns that were local based. We saw where the interest was coming from. We then took a Google map and we actually stuck pins in. I, I created a tool called Prospector that uh, the guys who've taken the local leads course have got access to. And essentially, if you pull in your list of all your leads, where they're coming from, and you've got their postcodes, um, you can actually start seeing where the clusters of people are coming from. Then what we did with those clusters is we'll do specific fly drops on like a square kilometer or two square kilometers. So instead of covering the whole town with 10,000 or 100,000 leaflets, we go to the specific areas where the interest was from, we'd, we'd do a fly drop on that area, those people would come back to our website and just type in a coupon code and we could see how the people coming back into the site through those fly drops and that gave us a, quite a lot of other business. We bought quite a lot of houses that way as well that weren't directly from the web. It was via a leaflet drop that got put through someone's door. Okay, so that gives us an idea of how much money we can actually increase too. Okay, so cool. This, this keyword grid, when it loads up, the richest keywords float to the top, and as we go down to the bottom of the barrel, and let's just say we get down to, how many keywords have we got here? 
uh, 90 keywords. So this is it. Most of these keywords will work. If you've got a long list and the keywords aren't profitable and they're not meeting your rules, you'll find a lot of red X's down in the bottom. Okay? And that helps us look at keywords in a different way because when we're going to use keywords in a silo grid and we're going to put them into the, the actual heart of our website, into a frame, those keywords must be important. They must be keywords that people use in their daily language to express what they're looking for. They must be keywords that have traffic, okay, because we need to get that traffic to our site. Okay, and if we've got traffic coming to the site and the site's converting, that creates transactions, which is our ultimate goal. We want those bookings. We want people phoning in. We want people filling in our opt-in forms. We want people coming to the salon to actually transact and get what they're looking for. Okay, so how do we create silo structures? So what I've done here, I'll just show you very quickly. I started off with wedding, and under wedding, what are the key services that SASE offers? They offer bridal hair, professional makeup, they do wedding and hair makeup and wedding hairstyles, okay? Now you can see under the weddings, these are the core services that this business offers. So we've got the silo and we've got one, two, three, four, five categories. Under hair, I've got hair care, hair extensions, hairstyles, hair products, hair cuts. Under hair, what we've done is we created another theme with five categories. But on this theme, we can expand because under hair extensions, we can start, start putting in Remy hair. Then under Remy Hair, we can start having Remy Hair forward slash or Remy Hair dash product name. Okay. We can actually do hairstyles for men, for women, for kids, products, Moroccan oil, all the products that we sell in the salon. We can actually start listing underneath our hair products. Then haircuts, we can introduce the stylists and the styles that they use and what you think is current. Okay. Then under makeup, bridal makeup, makeup lessons, makeup artists, bridal hair and makeup, makeup courses. Okay, these are the, the services that are underneath the makeup thing. So what I've done here essentially is, if I wanted to add a keyword to my silo structure, I'm just going through all this wedding stuff. Let's just put hairdressers. Okay, hairdressers can make me potentially 8,000 Rand. The people are looking for hairdressers. I want hairdressers to go underneath my hair silo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the actual silo. Now the way this works in DWS is whatever keyword you click on, you the, that becomes the parent theme for the keyword you're going to move into your silo. So you can see over here I've selected hair. Okay, I just clicked on it. I said I've selected it. I'm going to go to hairdressers and actually just stick hairdressers in. We've got hairstylists in that theme as well. That's hairstyles. I don't actually have hairstylists. I'm going to put that in as well. So I select those two and I just come to the bottom and I say move to blueprint. Now what DWS does is because every keyword we add in our stylist framework must be unique, we can't have multiple of the same keyword. Once we add it to the blueprint, it removes it from the keyword grid and it actually sticks it in here under hair. So then we can see we've got our hairstylists and we've got our hairdressers underneath the hair. And that's how easy it is to map out the silo structure. Okay. So what we can do with this is in Minimi, in the, the Minimi version, let me just go back to that. You can see that there's a correlation between the, the, the advanced version of DWS and, and the light version. Okay. When I click on design my site, this is where I'm building the silo structure. <coughs> there we mapped out all our keywords. What I can do now is I can export my blueprint. Okay. Now, if I export the blueprint and the XML file's empty, it means we've not actually marked it for publishing. Okay, so you want to go follow the rules. Import your keywords, design your site, mark for publishing, set up your WordPress site, export to your Blueprint XML, and basically take that and import into your blog. And I'll show you how that works now. Okay, so guys, are you clear on how easy it is to actually map out your Blueprint using DWS and how I've chosen specific words relevant to what I do for that business? Can you give me one if you call on that and you sort of get the things? Okay, cool. Right, so I'm going to take this XML now. You can see that when you look at this here, these little walls, the green arrow, mean the keyword's been published. It's ready. When we click Generate XML, it's going to take those keywords. But you can see here that the hairdressers that I've added and the, the hairstylists, 
those two keywords have not been published for, not marked for publish. So all I'm going to do is tick them and say approve for publishing. That's going to tell the system to actually build those XML nodes out that we need. Okay, we can actually see what the, those keywords mean financially to the business over here. Just waiting for it to do that quickly. Okay, that's it done. You can see all the nodes are published. I'm going to come and actually export my blueprint. I'm going to download this quickly. So I click on that. The system goes and generates the code. It creates a blueprint. We can now save this. I'm going to save this to my desktop. Okay. So there's a program that I want to introduce you to guys to. I'm not sure if you all got it. Um, or use it before, but if you want to work with XML, it's a, uh, a software called First Object, and it's an XML editor. It's a really cool little free tool that you can get online, and it helps you actually look at your XML file just to make sure that everything's there before you go and import it. Now, the reason why I check, okay, where is that now? It must be on one of my other screens. Here we go. Okay. So here's our blueprint, there's our blueprint nodes, there's our keyword, there's our titles, our meta keywords, our description, there's absolutely everything, there's our article, everything is held within this blueprint, okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hop across to WordPress, this is in my sandbox. In the permalink structure, you guys are all familiar with the category forward slash post name, you must use the custom structure with the WR1 framework and style architecture. Yeah, uh, Brian, Brian's asked you, is there a way in DWS to tweak the plan category in a URL to be different than targeting keywords that be needed? Um, those are things you've got to do in WordPress manually, Brian, um, where you change the slug and you can change the headlines and stuff like that. That's where I would do it. Uh, we don't do that in DWS. We just do the right format at, over there because essentially we want to get to the, the blog as fast as possible. So, yeah, we created the post name. Um, our Permalink structure is done. We take this, we copy and paste it into H2 Access. Set the H2 Access back to 0644. We lock it back down again straight away. We have our changes saved. Basic plugins you can see here. I've been looking at this botnet attacker. It's quite a cool plugin. Um, I'm busy testing it now. There's Brute Protect. We've got Google Analytics by Yoast, Google XML. These are default plugins that we're using. WP Manage for backups. Um, there's the Any Deep Silence Builder we got there. The video builder, if we want to use that, WordPress SEO, WordPress Optimize. The WordPress Optimize database, this helps get rid of, every time you write blog posts and you save a copy, it actually creates a new entry into the database. And what that does is it takes all that old legacy stuff and removes it, okay? And you can sometimes clear up to 50 to 100 megs of space you can free up in your database just using this little plugin. It's quite cool. And then there's a, a caching plugin, okay? Then you can see here, we've got no pages, okay, I've, I've deleted Hello World, this is a virgin sandbox, there's nothing in it, it's brand new, database is flushed, there's no posts, and we've got our default category, okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to any silo builder, I want to click on that, the, the menu here, the navigation, you can actually type in what you want, okay. You guys have been using the manual silo builder. What we want to use in this instance is the Silo Importer, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually set the Silo Importer to the draft. I don't want to have the short code embedded into each page, okay? That's something I prefer doing manually. I prefer taking the short code we get from settings. This is if you want to embed the layer, like the categories and stuff that's underneath your, your the, the structure. So if you're on the parent page, it's all the siblings of that parent page. This is what the short code will actually give us under settings. Okay. So I'm going to browse to this, this location where the file is. Let's copy that. And get our XML. Sort this by type. 
There we go. Got that there. I'm going to click open. Now I'm on the wrong one, sorry. Okay. We've got this little link here, advanced style of settings, okay? Um, what you can do here is you can tell what part of the XML you want to use where, okay? Now, if you've got a virtual site in DWS where you've not added any content whatsoever, what you want to do is you want to set everything to the primary keyword for now, okay? And what that's going to do is going to take your primary keyword and put it into all the places that's your meta titles and all the places that you need them. Um, alternatively, what you can do for the title of the page is you could actually use the page title, okay? For the slug, you can choose to use the primary keyword or the page title. I typically stick with the primary keyword when I set my stuff up because that's what I want to get ranked for, so I want the slug to have that keyword in it. Okay, so for now, I'm just going to use the primary keyword for this import just so we can look at it. So I'm going to click Import Silo. Okay, and when we get our pages and we refresh, There's our 20 drafts. Okay. So you can see all the keywords. If we go to our categories, uh, where's the categories? Now, when we build the sites out with, with, uh, with the silo builder, typically what it does is for your silos and your categories, it creates pages, guys. And for your posts, the posts are the supporting articles. Okay, so if you see nothing in the post area, that's because you've got no supporting articles in your XML. Okay, so what I want to do now is I'm going to come and select all these. I want to edit them. I click Apply. And I want to change the template. Actually, I need to change the theme. Let me change the theme first. Okay, I'm going to Themes. Let's just do 2012 for now. <clears throat> okay, so I've got the theme that I want to use. I come to my pages. And then when I get to the pages, I'm going to select all my keywords, I'm going to click Edit, and then I'm going to actually set up the columns on how I want them. So I'm going to check all, Edit, Apply, Templates, I want the default templates, I want to click Update. That sets my theme. Then what I'm going to do next is I'm going to come to Appearances, and I'm going to go to Widgets. Okay, so we're going to Widgets. And this is where I'm going to actually set up my sidebar navigation. Okay. So any solid plugin, I want to stick that into, I want to get rid of that. Recent post, I want to get rid of that. Get rid of that. Of that. I'm going to drag the plugin in just so we can identify it. Um, number links to show, show thumbnails, breadcrumbs. Yes, show excerpts. I'm just say it fine for now. Save that. We can just drag our search in underneath this. Okay, I'm going to save that. That's all that done there. Make sure there's nothing in there. Then we're going to come to our menus. And what we want to do is we want to view all our themes. We've only got the homes, categories, 
do you all take care. So there's our home page. What I want is I want the hair. I want the makeup and I want the wedding. I want to add this to my menu. Okay. Save that. Okay. So what we end up with is the site's basically formatted. Okay, so I'm going to open this up here. And there we can see our hair, our makeup, and our wedding. Okay, so if we click on the hair, hmm, something's not working there on that plugin. It looks like it. Okay, but that's the, that's the basic uh, pro process we go through. I just got to see what's going on there. So what I do with, with WordPress when I import the XML is I basically go to the builder, I import the pages, I come to appearance, I set my theme, I drag my widget in, I set my menus. On the menus, we essentially set up our silent landing pages only. We don't want to have the categories being exposed underneath the top primary menu. That creates theme bleeding, okay, and it actually dilutes your whole theme. So you want to make sure that the pages are not exposing all the categories underneath the silos. Um, can you guys give me a one if you're clear on that process? Okay. So what I want to do now is I want to come back to my pages and the reason why I can't see them uh, is because they are still in draft. Okay. So let's just take these all and publish them all. Bulk actions, edit, apply. Uh, status, published, updates, and we go back to our appearances, menus. This is the latest version of WordPress. This is WordPress uh, version 4, so I'm just checking everything out over here. So what I do with my sandbox, guys, is I always come and test everything here first before I push stuff to live. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to get rid of the categories. That's what I'm at wrong here. Can take that out there. Uh, let's remove that. Remove that. Remove that. So we've got a home page, a wedding page, a hair page, and a makeup page. So we can shift the items across to where we want them. We can save this, automatically add new top level page. Let's save that there. I typically take it off because I don't want things automatically added to my menu. I want to have control of that. Okay. So when we look at this website again and we refresh it. Okay. So we're on the home page. There's our wedding hair and makeup. Okay. If we click on hair, no menus are being exposed. Okay. And there's our content. What you can see here, there's our home and our hair. I turned breadcrumbs on over there. Okay, but uh, this is the title of the website, but there's my hair silo, and there's all my categories. Okay, if we click onto haircuts, home, hair, haircuts, hair, haircuts. So you can see the breadcrumb, and we can see our silo structure that we're actually working in. And that's how easy it is to actually set up your site with DWS. So, um, guys, all the hard work's been taken out of it for you, and what's interesting is that these the whole silo structure is actually created for you. So if we go back to the website and we look at our pages and we look at our categories, because we've got no supporting articles, so there'll be no posts. What you'll notice is that there's a carbon copy between the pages and categories. Okay, everything is the same. Everything is mapped out identical and the actual verbiage, the words, the spelling, the keywords, everything is identical. If you change a name of a category, you must make sure the slug is identical for the page and for the category. If you don't, that category is going to break. Okay, um, Guys, can you give me a one if you're clear on this process of how to get your site up using the tool really quickly? Excellent. Um, do you guys have any questions at this point in time? 
because uh, this is what we want to sort of cover this week is how to use DWS to rapidly build your style of structures, get your themes mapped out, and then um, get them live. So you can see in this chat, we've just got the stuff out really fast. That style is live. It's ready. We can actually start testing it and driving traffic to it and optimizing it and refining it and working on the conversion funnels. And it took us less than an hour and a half to talk you through this process. Okay. Um, the content, the content was what I added, Neil. Uh, it's just a project I've worked on before that I, uh, I showed you where we could add the content, and that basically came from the, the the pro version of DWS where we actually do site content. We can drop the content right in here, and it moves it all across. Uh, but the, uh, if you want to know where the content came from, he had it written, or he wrote it himself, or he and his wife wrote it together. Yeah. Yeah, we okay. generated the content. And that would have been done through following the principles of writing somewhere between uh, painkiller article writing method, which is not always appropriate. Um, folks, there is the concept of the big idea versus the painkiller articles. Your homepage, as we talk about in the video website silo architecture course that you're all entitled to inside the networkempire.com members area, uh, I talk about that in terms of your general layout. Generally speaking, I recommend that you put your big idea on your home page. Something that's distinctive, that's when your video landing page, or just your regular landing page, but it's a very interesting thing how you can have all the website silo architecture and content and SEO content writing style in the world, and it will do you, it'll avail you not, or it'll avail you nothing in terms of developing a brand and creating brand distinction for your product or service. So. The home page is where you want to do that. It's not enough just to have your SEO technical layout member. We are teaching you how to combine technical uh, website architecture with persuasion architecture and be technically accurate, stackable, semantically integrated, and uh, keyword and theme rich. Okay, so there's a lot going on here. I know you guys are aware of that. We're deeply involved in the technical infrastructure at this point. One of the reasons we focused so much on the FAQ, SAQ, is so that you all should have a huge pile of keywords and should ask questions, which can then lead to memes, okay, and or just excellent salesmanship. How many of you in this uh, group have experience in sales? Can you give me a one if you have an experience in sales and two uh, if you have never even, if you couldn't even I don't even, you know, if you couldn't sell anything, if you couldn't even sell a million dollars for free. <laughs> okay, so there's a few people. Um, hi, Serena, it's good to see you. Yes, uh, Serena, I will. Are you still in France? Serena Durante has just joined us. She's a long-time Network Empire student. Uh, yes. Um, the webinar, the webinar replays. Oh, you're back in the U.S. Okay. The webinar replays are all in the webinar section. Matt, can you just show them where the webinar replay section is? Sure. Um, go up to the top, and then, well, just yeah, it's under the. Yeah. You got to go to the top. Yeah. Webinar archives. Uh, I am a week behind on the webinar. I promised you that last week's is uploading right now. It's actually uploading to Amazon, and I'll put it in there. Um, nobody asked for it, so nobody pushed me really hard, and I fell behind with the week two. Both are going up today. For those of you who've taken Tech Foundation 1 and 2, both webinar replays are up today. And this one should be up uh, by Friday, Serena, okay, where Matt runs through all of this stuff for you. Uh, the reason I asked you about sales is because I just want you guys to remember that one of the best things you can do for your at least your index page is just be more in a sales mindset for a second. You know, don't forget what it is that you're selling. We talked about that, obviously, last week. All right, there's another question, Matt. Uh, do you build the Sandbox uh, website on a different domain hosting than the live site? That's a decent question. Yes. And, he, and Matt, Matt did answer everyone who can't see the, the help screen. Is The answer to that is yes. Yes. Uh, I always have a testing environment, and it's, it's just on a throwaway domain where uh, I go and check things out, make sure the configurations are working, and there's no technical issues because you don't want to bring your site down when it's live. Okay. So um, I can everybody, have the testing environment on my domain. It's on yeah, the absolutely, domain. absolutely. Everybody, um, if you wouldn't mind, can you please type in what hosting company you're currently using? This is a poll that I'm taking for two different reasons. Just type in the hosting company you're using. 
The one thing that I would say is uh, you want your sandbox site to be on the same hosting company, uh, preferably on the same hosting account, mm -hmm. so that it's going to have the same settings. Otherwise, yes, if you yes. put it on a different host... That's what I was getting at. <laughs> yeah, okay. exactly. Thank you, Sue. And, uh, uh, okay, boy, I see a lot of you using, wow, host, SEO, so-called SEO hosting company. Okay, not that that's bad. It's just you got to be clear on what's going on. How many of you are in this course right now because you're trying to improve the theming structure of your PBNs from OMG? Give me a one if you are just that the core focus of this is to increase your PBN siloing and two if you're really not. It's not only about PBNs for you. Okay. All right. Uh, let me ask you guys. Uh, uh, thank you. I really appreciate you guys are all giving me excellent feedback. Serena, I don't have an answer from you. Okay. Um, uh, thank you. Okay, great. Lionel doesn't care about PBNs right now. Okay, um, that's not a bad thing. All right, so let me ask you guys this. Can you please tell me which company you're using to build your WR1s? I don't want to hear about the companies that you're using to build your PBNs, your hosting company. And I appreciate you doing this mostly for my own self. Okay, all right, that gives me a little bit of an idea. WR1s only. Okay. Hmm. So some of you are using your WR1s on SEO branded and SEO marketed hosting companies. Okay, well that's good to know. Uh, just as you guys know, we are um, launching our own PinVid hosting environment. So I'm just kind of pulling to see uh, that. Okay, I use SiteGround for the wiki, Brian, but I really can't recommend it for your core infrastructure, just my opinion. But you didn't ask me for it, so. Okay, uh, thank you guys. I, I really appreciate that. Um, this session, uh, Matt, what are the homework assignments for this session? Okay, okay so for this week, guys, um, what I would like you to do is go through um, the week three to five site setup. If you're not familiar with setting up your site, this will give you a lot of good information of what we basically do to get the, the basic framework up. And then what we want to do is go through week four where we create our first silo and the actual content. Because what we're going to do over week four, five, and six is essentially we want to create a single silo each week with a minimum of three categories. Okay. If your project does not allow for three silos, don't get freaked out or worried. Just say, guys, um, this is all I can do for, for this product. Um, that's, that's, that's fine. Okay. So then, and then what you want to do is you want to go through the videos, preparing a bolt silo, mapping out the silos, the paint killer content creation, this is very important. This is where Russell goes into a lot of detail on how to write the pain killer content, okay? And then our homework checklist is over here. I'm just clicking on that. That'll take, give you a, a, a breakdown of all the actions you sort of want to follow. Right. Fantastic. Are there any, let's go ahead and wrap this up. We're going to just leave a moment. I know that some people have said their brains are, are reeling. Uh, Serena asks if we're going to be offering hosting. We're launching a hosting company for the PinVid course specifically. I still don't know uh, Sue's final word on whether they're going to recommend any of that for WR1 money sites. Um, just because we have so much going on, I haven't talked to her about it. So um, I really can't give you a precise launch date of that. Um, but it's Kevin's company, Kevin Polly. So it will be partially UK based and I think we're working on another location as well. So I can't really answer that question, but just stay tuned, Serena, and we'll let you know uh, what's going on and what our policy and recommendation is for that. Uh, trying to read Brian Hessler's comment here. Uh, hmm. Okay, I need to know more exactly what you mean about I, I that. I agree with you, Brian. Okay. All right. That's the final word then. Um, Sue, can you fill me in on that? I think actually, Brian, there's a plan to do that already in the rewrite. So I'm not going to read that out loud. It's too complicated for people to understand. But yeah, Sue gave the final word on that. Yeah, understood. And we're, we're aware of it. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Sue. Uh, Brian, I actually got to say that I really appreciate uh, having you in both the trainings. Uh, you're not afraid to look at things and talk about it. So keep, keep bringing up, brother. And I hope I'm going to be seeing you if you're uh, at the certification event, if your wife lets you go during spring vacation, I think that was you, wasn't it? <laughs> the kids <laughs> working on my wife. Brian's like, got it. How can the question I have for you, Brian, is how can we make your wife happy to let you go? So let's work that out. 
Uh, aside from me having to babysit your kids, I don't think I'm really into that. But, you know, hey, I might go to something. <laughs> Brian's like, yep, that's what you got to do. <laughs> Believe me, I understand. I've got, like, kids coming out the ears, so. Um, Let's give it an extra dub. <laughs> well, you know, there is, there, there is probably some neuro tactic, neuromarketing techniques we could use on here, Brian. Sue and I both have used them in the past, so <laughs> we can figure that out. All right, I think this is really good. Um, don't have anything else to add to this. You've got the homework assignment. Hey, Matt, one question I was wanting to ask you is when do people actually, sh they're, they're showing you their sites at the point they've gotten up to that in the Skype coaching session? Yes. That? Okay. Yes. Uh, um, typically when they get their first solid site up, uh, I'd like to go and have a look at the site okay. and see what they've done. All right. So, so, I, don't get to, so I, don't, I don't get to publicly embarrass anybody on this call with their live sites or anything. Okay. Just kidding. No, actually, you guys also know that you do have a, an environment, our weekly first Tuesday of every month, uh, which are regular membership. You can also bring your uh, sites in there. I want to tell you guys a little secret. Um, just ping me on Skype privately before the live, the Tuesday. You're going to get all that covered in coaching with Matt. Also, just wanted to say, if you ping us first, um, coaching certification students have preference during even those meetings. So just let me know. Remind me, hey, I'm in certification courses, and I want my site looked at with Sue and Russell. And Matt. Because sometimes we have everybody. We have, um, you know, Kevin, when he can be, a, you know, is there. And so we can kind of do all of that. So, all right. I think that's enough for today. I will upload this recording as soon as I can. I'll start the process of digitizing it. Matt, um, what time is it there? Uh, 10 o'clock. Okay, yeah, so it's probably time for you to get some rest. I uh, really appreciate everybody. You've had excellent questions. I'm really proud and excited to be working with all of you. Really, this is really a this is a really particularly kick-ass group, right, Matt? This has been really yeah. You've expressed you guys are more yeah, really on the ball. Okay, and uh, so we'll look forward to seeing you next week. It's going to be week five. Um, yes. And we'll talk to you then. This has been Russell Wright, Matt Cruz, Sue Bell from Network Empire. And we look forward to seeing you on the next live certification event, and we'll see you in next week's uh, Level 1, Week 5 training. Thank you. Great. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks, guys.